In this video, we'll talk about non-abelian groups of order p cubed. So the setup is that p is going to be an odd prime. We'll talk about uh, groups of order 2 cubed equals 8 at the very end of this video. We'll say something briefly. What we're going to do is construct two non-abelian groups of order p cubed, and we'll see that they're not isomorphic to each other. So let's get into the first construction. Let's say h is z mod pz cross z mod pz, and k is z mod pz. So h is the direct product of two cyclic groups of order p. Let's say that h is equal to uh, the cyclic group generated by a cross the cyclic group generated by b. We know that every element of h can be written as a to the i times b to the j, where i and j go between 0 and p minus 1. We know that the automorphism group of z mod pz cross z mod pz is gl2 z mod pz. And we can make this really concrete by saying that an automorphism uh, can be represented by a matrix. So an automorphism is determined by where it sends a generating set of h. If you send a to a to the i times b to the j and b to a to the l times b to the m, that gives the matrix i, j, l, m. So uh, the first column is keeping track of where a gets sent. The second column is keeping track of where b gets sent. So we want to construct this non-abelian group as a semi-direct product. So what do we need? We need a non-trivial homomorphism from k to ought h. So let's say k is generated by an element little k. We're going to define phi k, an automorphism of h, by making some choice where we're going to send phi k of a to a times b and phi k of b just to b. So the corresponding matrix here is 1, 1, 0, 1. So uh, since k is cyclic, saying where it sends a generator and then extending, um, yeah, extending in the natural way gives a homomorphism from k to ought h. What do I mean by that? Well, if this is a homomorphism, then phi k following phi k is phi k squared. So now that we've chosen where to send phi of little k, we know where to send phi of uh, k squared. So what does that mean? We have a non-trivial homomorphism. So that means that the semi-direct product of h and k uh, with respect to phi is a non-abelian group of order equal to the product of the orders of h and k. So p squared times p, this is a non-abelian group of order p cubed. And it turns out that this group is isomorphic to the Heisenberg group over z mod pz. This example that we've already encountered a bunch of times um, in homework exercises and in lecture. So we'll see more of the details of exactly how that works in the homework. So now I'll pause and erase, and I'll explain our second construction of a non-abelian group of order p cubed. Let's now talk about our second construction of a non-abelian group of order p cubed. In this one, let's let h be z mod p squared z. And let's pick a name for a generator. Let's say this is generated by y. And k be equal to z mod pz, which we'll say is generated by x. So we know that the automorphism group of h, the automorphism group of z mod p squared z, is isomorphic to z mod p squared z star the set of invertible elements mod p squared under multiplication. And we know the order of this is the Euler phi function of p squared, which is uh, p squared minus p, or p times p minus 1. It's the number of things relatively prime to p squared that are less than p squared. And the only things that are not relatively prime to p squared are the multiples of p. So, it turns out that actually this group is a cyclic of order p times p minus 1. We don't need that for what we're going to do here. Um, we just need that its order is divisible by p. So by Cauchy's theorem, that means that there is an automorphism of order p. So uh, for future reference, we'll, we'll come back to this in 206b, and uh, we'll see that um, this group actually is cyclic. 
So what do we want? We want a non-trivial homomorphism from K to ought H. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, say, what is the automorphism corresponding to X? So this is going to be defined by saying that phi X of Y is Y to the P plus one. So let me point out, this is potentially a little bit confusing. Uh, this example comes from Dummett and Foote. If it were me, I would want to write this additively rather than with the Y to the P plus one uh, notation, because these are both additive groups. But since this is the way that it's presented in Dummett and Foote, I don't want to switch the notation. So this is an automorphism of order P plus one, or of order P. You take y to y to the p plus 1. You do it again. You do it again. You do it again. You keep raising to the p plus 1 power. And if you do this p times, you'll get back to y. So phi of x following phi of x following phi of x with p times is the identity uh, automorphism of h. So that's a little exercise that you can check. So. Knowing what phi of x is, since x is a generator of k, this determines a homomorphism from k to ought h. And again, how is that true? Well, what should phi of x squared be? If this is a homomorphism, we definitely want uh, phi of x squared to be phi of x following phi of x. So if we know what phi x is, uh, that tells us what phi x squared should be. All right, so now we have a non-trivial homomorphism from k to ought h. So this semi-direct product of h and k with respect to phi is a non-abelian group of order p cubed. What group is it? I don't know. But it's not isomorphic to the Heisenberg group that we just saw. And the reason we can say that they're not isomorphic, because isomorphic groups have to have the same number of elements of each order. And this group has an element of order p squared, y1, right? Like the, um, there's this subgroup h tilde isomorphic to h. So because h has an element of order p squared, so does this semi-direct product. And the Heisenberg group does not. So uh, you can check that that's true as an exercise. So OK, we found these two non-abelian groups of order p cubed. But what else is there? And here is a classification theorem. I don't think we'll do all of the details of this in lecture, but I'll give you a reference in the uh, summary of lecture notes page. When p equals 2, something a little bit special happens. You could do these constructions that we did uh, for uh, 1 and 2, but they actually both lead you to d8. So for groups of order 8, there are three abelian ones z mod 8z, z mod 4z cross z mod 2z, and z mod 2 cross z mod 2 cross z mod 2. And every non-abelian group of order 8 is isomorphic to either d8 or q8. For an odd prime p, again, there's three abelian groups of order p cubed up to isomorphism, z mod p cubed z, z mod p squared z cross z mod pz, and z mod pz cross z mod pz cross z mod pz. But every non-abelian group of order p cubed is isomorphic to one of the two groups that we just described, either the Heisenberg group over z mod pz or this group. So uh, I won't put a full proof of that up, but it's not so difficult to do given the tools that we currently have.